What's up, YouTube? In today's episode, we're going to be talking about levels of abstraction. Now, this is a complicated topic or subject to explain, certainly. And it so happens that once you see it, you seem to get it. But that takes experience and time and a lot of code and a lot of looking at code to just get a sense of what I'm talking about. But I'm hoping to try and explain that or simplify, demystify abstraction and then certainly levels levels of abstraction. This topic is also very closely related to code reviews, design, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to put this video as part of my so you want to be a code reviewer aspect because when you're looking at code, you also want to make sure that the things that you see are at the right levels of abstraction. And I'll explain, of course, what that is. Now, from the English meaning of the word abstraction, it essentially means removing or extracting the complexities or structures or properties of something and decoupling it from where it is originally. That's from the English meaning of the word. And of course, there's many versions or meanings of that. Essentially, that boils down to something like you're dealing with the ideas rather than the concrete implementations of things or ideas rather than the nitty gritty details of how something is working. In software, that works very well because in software, we are always talking in terms of concretions and implementations and such that and, and such things. So in software, abstraction and levels of abstraction, of course, they're two different things. Abstraction is the concept of decoupling from decoupling or hiding the details of something from where you are at. So if you want to abstract something away from here, you're saying, let's take this out, let's move it out and decouple it from here. So we're not having to deal with the details or the implementation details of the thing, right? Levels of abstraction go quite a bit deeper than that. Abstraction and levels of abstraction is a key programming concept. It's It applies to whatever kind of programming you're doing, whether it's procedural programming or structured programming, object-oriented programming, functional programming, however you want to look at it. The ideas are the same and the concepts are the same. But it's also one of those things that people don't seem to focus on, they don't understand, or maybe they understand it, but they don't, they don't pay a lot of heed to it. More attention is paid to things like single responsibility and you know design and classes and all that sort of thing, where the problem starts at the sort of the foundation, if you will, where the idea of abstraction and then the second aspect, the idea of levels of abstraction is so key because if you get that aspect, then automatically things start to fall in place. Otherwise, you're designing classes, but you're not paying heed or paying attention to the way these things are implemented and whether you should abstract something to a class or not is in itself questionable. So just because you have a bunch of classes doesn't mean your system is designed well. And certainly, even if it's designed well, is it implemented well? The implementation part is really where we have to deal with in our code because that's what we're maintaining. We're not maintaining the design per se. We're maintaining the code that we see, and that is the implementation. Levels of abstraction is pertinent more to the implementation of things, but certainly also helps you understand the design. And specifically, this applies to, or at least this talk is, about method design. And of course, method design implies class design, and class design implies system design, and so on and so forth. The way I would like to explain levels of abstraction is by way of, again, hardware. <laughs> and I'm hoping this is not too deep for some of you, but you should be able to make sense of it because I'm talking about a computer. Now, we are working on a computer as programmers at a certain level of abstraction. This is a very high level of abstraction, C sharp. They also call it a high level language. So it's a high level abstraction, which means the abstraction is so high or so much that you're not able to see the real thing. The real thing is that CPU working with bytes and bits in CPU registers and in memory and so on and so forth. But we never see that. We never even think about that. And that's the point of abstraction. And that's also levels of abstraction in this case, your C sharp code is at a much higher level of abstraction than the hardware, even before the CPU. So the CPU is comprised of logic gates, it's comprised of capacitors, resistors, and all that baked into a chip. That what we call a CPU. And the CPU 
in turn is on a motherboard and so on and so forth with memory chips and hard drive and, and all the other components of a motherboard. What we do in the C sharp level up here at a high level abstraction is really happening down here at the hardware level. And there are many layers in between because from C sharp, you've got the C sharp compiler that takes our human readable C sharp language code to IL or intermediate language. Then the jitter or the just in time compiler takes that IL and converts that to machine code. Then machine code or machine instructions, sorry, so x86 or ARM or whatever. And that is then compiled to machine code that that's the, what the CPU understands. And the CPU takes that and it's working with bits and bytes in, in its L1, L2, L3 cache or its uh, main memory or registers and what have you. For your application to work, it goes from C sharp to these different levels of abstraction. Each level of abstraction is getting closer and closer to the metal, closer and closer to the thing that actually does the work. If you get this, you're going to get levels of abstraction very easily. And I'm going to try and explain some other ideas that are closely related to levels of abstraction, but I'm going to show you code as well. The code I show you here is, as I said, it's related to the code review process, or so you want to be a code reviewer series. And I'm going to explain my reasoning. So imagine you are looking at this code and you're doing a review. What faults do you find? And how would you fix it? And I'll, I'll give you, of course, my perspective on what I'm seeing and why would I want to fix it, but focus mainly on levels of abstraction, not design. All right. So in this episode, certainly since I'm talking about level of abstraction, I'm going to try and keep my focus and your focus on levels of abstraction without getting too caught up in should this be another class or should this be, you know, 10 other classes, what have you. So that's not really where I'm trying to go in this, this episode. And the code I'll make available to you on my GitHub. I'll put a link down in the description below. But stay focused on the levels of abstraction, which is the topic of this video. All right. So as I said, before I even start with that, I want to show you or talk to you about certain things that I work with in my systems. Maybe you'll start using the same ideas. But it's important only because the code I'm going to show you is structured in that fashion. And so you need to understand that part before I can show you the code. Because when I start doing the refactoring, I might go a bit fast without trying to explain all the details of all the different classes you might see. All right. So what you're seeing here is the system, this dark green box here is the system. The service interface layer, if you remember from one of my other videos, the core API principles, design principles, core API design principles, I talk about the SIL or the service interface layer and then the system. So this is the block box here is the system. Now within the system, I have in my systems, I have a class called the domain facade. I'm not going to try and explain that to you or what it does or doesn't do, but think of it as the, the, the point of entry. The only class that is available, if you would imagine this green box to be an assembly, then for the most part, conceptually speaking, the only class you can see from outside this assembly is the domain facade. Of course, there are exceptions you might be able to, you, you should be able to see and any details that are going in and out of the system, but for the, con for the purpose of this conversation, just think of it this way. The domain facade is your point of entry in the system, is the only public class, so that's the only thing the service interface layer is going to see. All right. I have, there could be one or more managers, and the managers have one or more helpers, and they could be sharing helpers. Now, I'm using the word helper as a generalized term. I never have a folder or a class that has the word helper in it. But when I speak, when I'm talking, I'm saying that's a manager's helper. It just implies it's a class that is a subordinate to a manager class. So rather than trying to define what kind of thing it's doing, I say generally it's a helper. But there's no folder called helper. There's no class called helper, or the word helper is not part of the class name. And then we have a data facade, which is the, the facade or the entry point into the data layer. Of course, this is one assembly but I still have the idea that there's a data layer here. So there's a demarcation between the business layer or the domain layer and the data layer. 
And then the data layer has a similar structure. There's a data manager that has one or more helpers. And then eventually the managers, as you can see from these arrows here, the managers are the ones talking to the database. Now helpers can have helpers as well. So a manager has, a, has n number of helpers one or more of those helpers can have additional helpers. Now that's to the extent that I've ever gone in almost every one of my software development experiences. Uh, it's not something that I even do often, but sometimes a helper has helpers. What you're gonna notice now is I've put these dotted lines here. These classes are arranged in a specific manner, as in, in this vertical sort of structure here, to indicate levels of abstraction. These levels of abstraction also manifest themselves, at least in my projects or solutions, as physical folders on the file system and, of course, in Solution Explorer. A level of abstraction, I'm going to explain the, the differences, but the idea is that a level of abstraction is indicating a certain level of implementation detail. So certain classes are doing certain work, and then they elicit the help of other classes that are subordinate or down level from them that do more intricate work or detailed work that is closer to the metal, just like the C-sharp and the CPU aspect and all, all the stuff in between C-sharp, the compiler, the jitter, and uh, machine code, and so on. So these classes, now I, I call the domain facade level zero, just because I'm not wanting to talk about that in this system, in this video. Level one is at a certain high level abstraction. In my systems, the managers are the essential point of entry, even though the domain facade is the point of entry from the outside. The domain facade is not doing anything, so effectively the code that I'm going to write is going to be in the manager, and the manager is the point of entry into my system. Okay, that's the first level of abstraction. At that level of abstraction, it is instructions. Get these things done, not how. Right? It's, it's, it's the what are you doing, but not the how you're doing it. And I'll talk more detail about that. If a class at a certain level of abstraction is using another class, then that class has to be at a lower level of abstraction. It cannot be at the same level. In other words, managers in this case don't talk to each other. <laughs> managers don't talk to each other. Any siblings, siblings in terms of the levels, but also in terms of the folder structure, siblings don't talk to each other. Do you have a sibling you talk to? <laughs> Just kidding. For this video or this episode, siblings don't talk to each other. So if a manager needs to make use of a class, that class is by force a lower level of abstraction from the manager. It is also in a folder one level down from the manager's folder level. It's not necessarily in this, it doesn't have to be a child of the manager's folder, but if you can imagine certain folders are at a certain level and subfolders are at a different level, then this class or these classes need to be in a level down from the manager in the folder system, folder in the file, in the file system and also in Solution Explorer, right? And there's a reason for that. So anytime you see an arrow going from class A, some class to some other class, you can, you, you will know that that class is going to have to be found in a subfolder or a folder down from the class you're talking about. And that's why it's important. If this helper were to make use of another helper as another class, then that class also will have to be in a subfolder below it or a folder level below it. And it'll be in this case, level three, which I'm not showing here, but so we have level one and level two right now. In my mind, the way I think of these systems, since this is a domain facade, this is again a subsystem, if you will, that's combine in the one assembly and the levels start again. So this will be level zero, then these classes will be in level one, and these classes will be in level two. And if these classes require additional helpers as well, then there'll be a level three. But once again, it's the manager, the data manager in this case, that talks to the database. The helpers don't. The helpers have no idea about the database, but they're doing other work for the manager. With the same idea here, the managers are the ones that talk to the data facade. These other classes have no notion of a data facade. They're helpers. So the manager talks to them, they talk back to the manager. They don't go and talk to something else and something else and eventually reach the database. So it's important to, at least this is how I design systems. So, but this is not the primary talk, but I want you to understand that the way I 
diagram the system is also adhering to those levels of abstraction. And so in my mind, levels of abstraction manifest themselves in classes and or in folders, but also in methods within the class. So it's it's a bit confusing. So I'm going to start, I'm going to show you some code so that that confusion hopefully will disappear. All right. So I have this solution opened up here. I'm going to just zoom in into the folder structure so you can see what I've been talking about. We have a solution. I'm calling it movie service. And it has a domain layer. So this is one assembly, one project, and that's another project. So this is my SIL or service interface layer. In this case, it's just a web API layer. We're not going to be talking about that today. We are more focused on the domain layer. So in the domain layers root folder, there is my domain facade. And that's for, the, for most parts, that's the only class available in this folder level, as you could have seen from the diagram. Then I have a folder called managers. And then when I expand the managers folder, there are a number of subfolders. So you can already tell, first of all, in this managers folder, I should see a manager somewhere. And we have a manager called the movie manager. And the manager is potentially using other classes. And so these are all the other subfolders. So this manager sitting here in this folder can talk to any classes in these subfolders. As I said, so if there are multiple managers, they'll all reside in this folder, siblings to this class. And any of the managers could access the services of any one of these classes in these subfolders, but only classes in these subfolders. This idea that a class at a certain level of abstraction can talk only one level down is very important. You, you don't want a class at a certain level of abstraction jumping down more than one level, right? If that's happening, there's an issue in the way you decompose your, your system, the way you design your system. If you need siblings to talk to each other, same thing. There is a problem in the way you decompose or de design your system such that you're finding that two classes in the same level of abstraction need to talk to each other. So you could take out that commonality and abstract it into another class and put that class one level down. And now these two managers or the two siblings can then talk to that one common class. And that's why you may have a helper's helper as well, because there could be two helpers that need certain common functionality. And you say, you know what, I'm going to extract this functionality out or abstract it out into another class because at that level, the next level abstraction is lower. It's closer to the metal. It's probably doing a lot more detail. It's a highly specialized thing. And there could be two or more helpers requiring that specialization, the help of that specialization. So, all right, I'm going to try and keep this simple, but I'm hoping you understand and please follow along. When you see some code, immediately start to look for how would I fix it? If you want to be a code reviewer, your attention should be going to immediately. What can I do to fix this code? Does this code need to be fixed? How am I going to fix it? All these sorts of things. All right. So let's take a look. I'm going to focus your attention to certain pieces of code only so that we don't end up doing a whole lot of uh, code review here in this episode. I'll use the same code base for my next episode where we do some more code reviews. So for now, or for this episode, just focus on the methods I'm pointing you out to. All right. So this movie manager has a method called create movie. Given a movie, which is a simple DTO, as you can tell here, it's an immutable class. It's got two string properties, a genre property, which is an enum, and an int property, which is a year. But it's relevant for this, uh, well, somewhat relevant to the, this talk, but not that relevant. If you remember my PWI talk, my programming with intent talk on method design, if you haven't watched it, please watch it here because these talks are all going to be focused more on what you've learned there or what I've talked about there. And so I'm sort of reinforcing that in these talks. So you want to be a code reviewer as well as this one. I validate all my data at the point of entry. So this might sound a little weird. It's not weird to me, but maybe it sounds weird to you. I don't allow any bad data to come into my system. So I'm going to block it at the point of entry, which is I call the front door. And you probably heard me say this in other episodes, and certainly you'll hear me say this in the PWI uh, talk. I say, if you lock the front door and you lock the back door, you're safe in the house, which means if you clean your data up before you let the, the data come into your system from the front, as in the, from, let's say, from the UI side or API side or the back door, which could be 
external services, your database, what have you. If the front door and the back door are locked, that no data can come, no bad data can come into the house. So you're safe in the house. You don't have to worry about data being bad or incompatible or nulls and that sort of thing. Okay? So since this is the public method of the manager, the manager is the point of entry into, the, into this system, then the first thing I'm going to do is validate the movie, whatever that would mean to the business. So all of these methods here are doing the validation. It's not methods, I mean, all of the code, lines of code here is doing validation, all right? So I check to see if the movie is null. If, if it's null, throw an exception. If it's not null, validate every one of the, the properties, the genre, the title, the image URL, the year. And if all of those are okay, then if they're not okay, throw an exception. And if they're all okay, I can then go ahead and save the data to my database. Now, just for information's sake here, the way I do validations is I validate rather than throwing an exception as soon as I find the first problem in the, let's say in the movie, let's say the title is incorrect, I just throw an exception. I accumulate all problems with any input data and throw one exception that details all the different problems that I might have encountered. Okay, so to be more useful, to be more user-friendly to have a better user experience or even from an external systems perspective, if another system is calling you, then that team is going to thank you saying, man, you gave us one exception that told us everything was wrong. And as soon as we fixed all of these things, it just worked, right? Instead of saying, hey, here's your title, it's a problem. Then they fix the title, they say, oh, your year is a problem. Then they fix the year and they say, oh, so and so is a problem. So the idea here is that it's going to do that. Not so relevant to this talk, but I thought you should know since I don't want you to spend time trying to understand the code just know what it is that I'm doing here. And then I open a database connection. I, well, I create a connection, I open a connection, I start a transaction. I create a command for a specific store proc. In this case, create movie. Oh, and in my system, that is the way I design systems. Method names have got the name of the business, as in whatever the business might call it, all right? And as you can see, the, our, our requests flow through the system, right? They, and eventually it's going to go out to a database or a service or whatever it is. When I have a method called create movie here, let's assume that's the, what the business of the system calls it, then there will be a stored proc also called create movie. And all the calls that this method will call will have I'm not talking about helper classes or classes that are doing extra specialized work, but once the manager is done with cleaning up and doing his thing, it's not doing it here yet, but it might call into a data manager to say, hey, can you please you know, create this movie? The data manager's method also is going to be called create movie. The data manager is then going to use a store proc called create movie and so on. So it's important to keep the names the same so that they don't start changing as the flow goes through the system. That's going to be really confusing. All right, so without trying to understand all the details of this, this is all the data, data, sorry, this is all the code that is required in order to save this data into a database, right? So that's that. And once that's done, that's it. So that's what this, is, this method is doing. In order, to, in order to create a movie, validate the movie, DTO, and if, DTO, if, the, valid, if, and if the DTO is valid, save it in the database. That's it. Now, if you can see what's happening here, some of it could just be the, the way I described the code to you, you would know that there are at least two different things going on, validation and database. So right away we can say, okay, well, one of the key aspects of levels of abstraction, the way I design classes is, every public method of every class is striving, is trying to orchestrate. So any public method you have in a class, the first thing you would see, or the only thing you would see in the implementation of this class is orchestration. Orchestration, I mean, in order to create a movie, we just said it. In order to create a movie, you need to first validate the movie, and then you, need, you can save the movie. The orchestration representation of that is two steps. Step one, validate. Step two, save the movie into the database. That's it. I don't want to see the clutter of all this code. This is way too much detail for a manager. Now, think of managers as your managers at work. The typical hierarchy or structure is there's a manager, 
then there's a, a lead, maybe it's a dev lead or a tech lead, and then there's the developer. Right, so there's three levels of abstraction. At every level, the people responsible or in that position do certain kinds of work only. They don't go and into the detail. Their manager is not going to write code for, for you, hopefully. <laughs> I've had that happen in one of my jobs where the CEO was writing code and I said, this is ridiculous. You should be doing your work. Let us do our work, right? But think of it that way as well. The managers have a responsibility. The managers delegate. So the managers might have multiple leads under them. And each man, the manager is going to say, okay, you lead so-and-so. You get this done. Get your team to do this part for me. And you lead so-and-so. You get this part done for me. The leads are a little more technical, if not very technical. And they will probably decide which of their developers is going to do what part. Right? So they understand the developers. They say, okay, this person is good in this thing, or this person has an hand, hand, hand experience in this area. We have some time. I'm not going to give this work to this person so he or she can gain extra experience on that in that area that they don't have any experience with, and so on. So the managers are deciding certain things and they orchestrate. Okay, you do this, you do this, you do this. The leads come and say, okay, I'm going to make some decision based on what I understand the system is supposed to build, build like, what technologies may be used. And so dev you, you do that, and dev view, you do this, and so on and so forth. Different kinds of decisions, but at the same time, orchestration. It's key to remember the orchestration part. So all public methods of all of my classes will strive to orchestrate. Right? No matter how mundane or simple something might seem, if it's in a class, and the class hopefully is doing some useful work for you, it has some complexity that needs to be factored out or needs to be abstracted from the public method into steps. And those steps are orchestration. So effectively, what I want to see here is I want to see, let's say, validate movie. Right? Now, if you're starting out with this idea, I would suggest very, very strongly to refactor in the same class. Don't think about the design of the system at this point. Right? And this, I think, is where the people make, most people make a uh, mistake. They're immediately saying, oh, this should be a class. And Don't worry about that. That'll all work out and it'll play out automatically. If you can decompose your methods at the right level of abstraction, once you can see groups of methods that probably belong into a separate class, just copy paste it. But at this point, don't try and design the system. Just clean up the implementation from the perspective of levels of abstraction. Every method should be at a certain level. The methods that this method calls should be at a lower level of abstraction. And if that, those methods are calling other methods, then those methods, the level three, should be at even lower level of abstraction, right? So I'm, to save time, I'm going to speed things up a little bit and I'm going to kind of jump ahead. But keep in mind, normally you should have just done this at, in the same class itself. So now I know in my systems, I typically have validators that will do this work, right? So I'm going to just delete this code out of here. And I'm going to define a new folder under my manager's uh, folder. And I'm going to call it validators. I also have a naming convention that is backwards from, I'm guessing, most of you. If I have a movie validator, you probably call the class movie validator. <laughs> well, I, call, I call them validator movie. And the reason is the alpha ordering in which the Solution Explorer in Visual Studio and other IDEs shows you your classes. So if I had a bunch of classes that were doing the same kind of thing, like validation, for example, then if I had a movie validator and then I had a, a ticket validator and I had a person validator and so on and so forth, they'd be ordered in alpha order and they could be all over the place and there could be other kinds of classes sort of embedded in between them. So rather than get all confused, my validators, if I name them the other way, validator movie, validator person, validator ticket, and so on and so forth, the validator classes will all show up together. So I call my classes, I name them backwards a bit. So I'm going to create a new class called validator movie. Okay, now with the help of some magic, I've got my 
movie validator validator movie class here and everything looks good i'm just seeing there's no compiler errors okay now just to go a little deeper in the validation part this public method is called ensure movies valid now ensure prefix of a method name and this is following the dotnet framework as well implies it's going to throw an exception so if this says ensure movie is valid it, it implies if the movie is not valid it's going to throw an exception right i programmed two exceptions if you haven't seen that video of mine please take a look at it over here i'll put a link up on there it's called programming to exceptions anyway in this video the understanding is that if the movie is null it's going to throw an exception and if other issues exist then it's going to accumulate all the errors and finally throw an exception for all possible errors it might have found all right that's the public method they in turn have helper methods and so on so i've just pushed them all over here they were all in the manager class i'm going to actually remove them from the manager so i'm going to call this now validator movie and i'll include the namespace and show movies valid and give it the movie Okay, and then all these other class methods that I copied over from here now have a zero reference. I can happily take them out from here. All right, so that's that. So what you're also seeing, because this is a manager class, it's simply wanting to orchestrate. Managers should not be getting into the weeds of how to do something. That's like in the real world scenario, that's our job. The devs get in the weeds. The leads and the managers stay at a certain higher level of abstraction. They've got their own roles, their own responsibilities, but it's not coding. <laughs> the coding is our job. We're down to the middle. We actually get the code work done. The leads are making sure the entire team is working towards a certain goal to get to a certain deadline and so on. So they've got different responsibilities. They do their work differently. They're not dealing with or don't want to, for the most part, deal with the detail at which we are dealing with. And conversely, we don't want to be dealing with the detail they're dealing with. So every class is at a certain level of abstraction. It's, it's a specialist at that level of abstraction. And it's not meddling with or mixing and matching different levels of abstraction. But it's also methods. So, I mean, in a smaller system, all of those just would have been a separate method. Right? So this, instead of saying validated movie dot ensure movie is valid, I would have actually just had a method in this class called ensure movie is valid. There's nothing wrong with it. You should start here. Take my word, you should start here. Once you're familiar, things start to happen. I think your brain starts to work in a certain way. I'm not sure what happens, but it's just, or maybe it's experience. You know, I think it's experience because I can, since I've done it so many times, I can see far ahead. And so I already know that it's going to be another class, right? But if you haven't done this sort of thing and you're, you're learning this thing, I would say just refactor it into another method. Every method, when you call a method A calls method B, it has to be in a lower level of abstraction from method A. And if B calls a C, then C has to be at a lower level of abstraction. Lower level abstraction just means getting closer and closer to doing the real work. A high level abstraction is, I just want to know the, the what, not the how. Step one, do this. I don't want to know how. Step two, do that. So if you were to look at the class in the future, you're saying, okay, create a movie. How does it do that? Don't want to know how. What is required in order to create a movie? Well, we can see here. Now, we haven't refactored it yet, but step one, validate the movie. Step two, create the movie. Done. So that's all it takes, right? So you don't want to get caught up in the, in the how things are being done. You want to know what has been done. At every level, even when this ensure movie is called, this method is called, you still want to go into that method and say, what do you need to do? To validate a movie not the how part the what part every method is trying to explain to the viewer or you know future selves what are we doing not the how we're doing it and you'll find yourself cleaning up your code and kind of getting more and you start to understand that certain methods just because the code you see in these methods are at a certain level of abstraction and this part doesn't belong here or that part doesn't belong there because of these things okay so as i said this is a difficult concept to explain so i'm going to try and explain to you via code and hopefully that'll make sense 
Okay, this part here is very database centric. So I'm gonna move this since I already have a data manager via the data facade. I'm gonna move all this code into the data manager. So in my data layer here, as you can see, we have a data layer over here. So the data layer has a data facade. So which is at the top level. So if you didn't do that, you could see that structure. And so I'm gonna add a method here that says create movie. So this create movie will be public. It's definitely gonna be uh, asynchronous. And it's gonna return a task, which means void. And it's gonna call, be called create movie because I said the names don't change. We don't invent names. And this is gonna take a movie. Okay, now because this, this is a facade, it doesn't do much, it's gonna call onto the movie data manager. I'm gonna ask it to create a movie there. And it's gonna pass in the same movie. No decision making logic, no validations. In this case, validations are not required. Remember, if I lock the front door and I lock the back door, I'm safe in the house. So I'm never ever gonna validate arguments, parameters coming into my methods. I just assume it's okay. If it's not okay, it's your problem. <laughs> If you watch my PWF video, I'll say, call us data, call us problem. All right. So I need to do this asynchronously. I need to define a method in this class, the movie man data manager class. And this should be public. And it's task returning here. Okay. And this should be async as well. Okay, so here, what I'm literally going to do is going to copy the code from the manager class here, all of this database related code, remove it from here and put it into my data manager. All right. And here, I'll just say uh, data facade dot create movie, what did I call it create movies? Hmm, wrong, this should be create, called create movies since it's a singular. And this should be async. Okay, and this here should be called create movie, create movie. Okay, so the movie manager and here, typically for asynchronous um, methods, you should also do a configure await, await false. It's not about async await, so if you haven't watched that, if you don't understand async await, please watch my other video on YouTube on async await. All right, so that's our orchestration. So before I forget, let me paste all the code in here for my data access stuff. All right, now we don't have the add parameter method, so that will be in our movie manager somewhere. Add db parameters, got zero references, we can take that out. Of course, this code has already been defined or implemented in a certain way that is almost there in terms of levels of abstraction, so I'm trying to save some time. But if you were to write this code from scratch, you'd find it'd be quite a mess. By mess, I mean all kinds of things happening in this one method, and they're each one at a different level of abstraction in order to decide whether this is level one, level two, or level three. So I've done some of that work already here. All right, and I add a method here called add parameter, db parameter, duplicate exception. All right. Okay, so I've got my movie manager that uh, in order to create a movie is two steps. Validate the movie, create the movie, done, right? I don't wanna know the, the how, just the what. If there's a problem in the validation, I'll go there. If there's a problem in the creation, I'll go there. So I'm not getting muddled with everything else. Now, going with the levels of abstraction and orchestration, every public method of a class should strive, should try its best to do orchestration in the public method. All right, so I'm gonna go in here. 
and come here. Say, okay, well, what's this? As a code reviewer, tell me what's wrong with this. Pause, and then come back. And I'll continue and give you the solution here, or my, my way of thinking about this stuff. So what I have here is, I mean, it's pretty clean. For what this method is trying to do, this doesn't fit in here. I, I don't mean that you shouldn't do it. I, I, what I mean is, this code does not belong here, and nor does this for that matter. So what I would like to do is have a method that says, ensure movie is not null. Right, so I'm just going to refactor this into another method here. Remember, ensure implies it's going to throw an exception. So we have that. It's private and static, as it should be. And there's a movie here. Okay, so that's good. So that's our orchestration coming to life. This method here is, what's it doing? It's uh, ensure no validation error messages. Okay, so we refactor this also into another method. And we're going to call it ensure no validation, validation messages. All right, so that's that. Cool. So then, now suddenly this is looking out of place. <laughs> this is the, the fun of refactoring in a methodical manner, where you understand abstraction, you understand levels of abstraction, and suddenly you start to see, as I said, it comes with practice. We start to see, oh, there's not something not right here. It doesn't look good. In my mind, it's just saying it, that doesn't look right. I can't necessarily explain it, even though I'm trying to explain it to you. I just know there's a problem here. I, I, it's not like I have to think about it. So hopefully that'll come as you do more and more of this work. So this should also just be abstracted into another method that says um, get validation error messages or something like that. Oops, this should have actually been. Hmm, this is a little more complicated. So I'm just going to fix all of this. Essentially, I need all of these uh, messages coming back from here. So let me just fix that and get back to you. All right. So essentially, I've just called a method, create a method, define a method here called validate properties that takes a movie and returns a string. And this method is accumulating the error messages and returning the, the the concatenated version of that. And then the ensure errors, in this case, only because it's going to... If you concatenate null strings, by the way, you're going to get an empty string. And I don't like empty strings. I don't allow empty strings in my system. So that's a big no-no for me. But in this method, in this example, I'm going to be a little relaxed with just me more work. So the insurer is saying, okay, is the length equal, not equal to zero? If, it's, if the length is not equal to zero, there's a problem. It can't check for nulls. Ideally, this method here should say, okay, I'm going to concatenate it, and if the length is null as zero, return a null instead. And then over here, on the insurer, I just say if the error message is null, is not null, throw an exception. Simple, but I'm just simplifying it for now. Not that it takes time to do that part here anyways. Anyway, the point of this exercise was this public method, orchestration. Again, how do you ensure a movie is valid? Well, is it null? No. Are all the properties okay? Cool. If there are any error messages from the properties validation, throw an exception. Orchestration. Steps. The what, not the how. The what, not the how. <laughs> all right. So, you could tell already from our original, let's say if the manager was level one, then this method is level two. These methods are then conceptually at level three, right? But um, when I was talking about the three levels could exist, it was more at the class level. But every class, even if it's doing a small amount of work, can have three, four methods that it, the one method calls method two, calls method three, right? It's possible depending on the complexity. 
the idea of levels of abstraction are is not connected to single responsibility or design or whatever else. Once you decide that this functionality belongs in a class, how do you implement that class? You have to follow these ideas, levels of abstraction. It doesn't matter what it is you're doing. Levels of abstraction apply within the class, applies you know, across the methods in a class, applies, applies across classes in a system and so on. So it's, it's a universal idea. It is disjointed from design of the system per se. It's more towards the implementation of what it is you're doing. All right, so we've refactored that. Our movie manager now looks pretty cool. It's just got the, the, the what's being done, not the how. That's good. All that detailed code has come out of here. Hmm. This is this method not looking <laughs> right either. Okay, we'll do this as an exercise as well. But let's check the the path from here to here to the end to see what we can do to fix things if we need to fix anything. So facade doesn't do much, so we can just close that out because it's just a simple call out. Oh, we need to do a configure await here as well. Just an optimization, not a problem. All right, and if you go to the data manager, we can see that. Here, create movie. So here, from a levels of abstraction perspective, one other way to identify is when you're making database calls, when you're making service calls, when you're making file system calls, sending out emails, these are very detailed and specialized. They are at a lower level of abstraction. Now you could still have orchestration and all this sort of thing there. And within this class, this data manager is working with the database connections and transactions, it will still have helper classes to get extra work done. Not extra work, some of its work done. That it feels, I don't want to know. You do it, I don't want to know how you do it. I'm going to tell you what to do, right? The other aspect that comes clear, hopefully, when you're working with levels of abstraction, the kinds of decisions being made are changing slightly. If you remember the manager, lead, and dev example I gave, we're all making decisions. Just the kinds of decisions we're making are very different. When the manager tells the lead to get this work done, the lead doesn't question why. There's no decision-making process at that level. The manager decides that. The manager must have gone through some process in their head and said, okay, I need to get this lead to get this work done. When the manager comes and tells the lead to get this work done, the lead's not questioning the manager. The lead's going to make other kinds of decisions as to who to get the work to, what work should be done, etc., etc. And then the lead tells this specific dev, get this work done. And the dev's not asking why. The dev has to make other decisions. Because and, you know, when you're writing software, there's all kinds of decisions you have to make. So, but the kinds of decisions we're making are different at different levels. For the most part, you don't question why. You get the job done. And while you're trying to get the job done, you're asking questions relevant to that part of the job, that level of abstraction. So here, we are, this looks, is not bad, but again, I, I don't like that. that. That is actually all of this, the command stuff. So, and all of this does not belong here. It's too, just look at this code here, right? It says, create connection, open connection, start, begin transaction, Execute the non-query, commit the transaction. That's really all I want to see here. I don't want to see this part here. It's still well laid out, the code, except this part, all of this, this command part to do with that store proc doesn't belong here. So I'm going to refactor that. I'm going to, now I have a naming con convention for these things. I call it create command for and the name of the store proc. Simple. So this method is going to be called create command for create movie. So it might sound weird, but that's a naming convention I've been following for all my command factories. So I'm going to call this uh, create command for create movie. Create movie being the name of the store proc that it's going to be working for. So if I look at this and I change these orders around, I don't like the way it's done this year. For me, the connection comes first. Order of parameters or arguments matter. <laughs> At least they do matter to me. The connection comes first. 
the transaction comes second and the movie will come third that's how I would order it so create command for movie I'm just going to swap these out okay all right so if I went back here okay now this is not typically I would even abstract the exception handling out to another class that's a specialist in knowing what to do with exceptions and how to dig into the exceptions I'm going to leave that in this system for now there are still some code review issues in this code we will talk about in, in this specific kind of code that will be in a different video right now I'm focusing more on abstractions and levels of abstractions and refactorings that are driven by that thought process so from a levels abstraction perspective I'm good because it's all single things it's not like I don't need to know the how you create a connection I don't want to know how you create one just create one open a connection I don't care to know how but open it begin a transaction I don't really care to know how you do that but just do it create a command for the store proc I don't care to know how just do it execute don't get a now just do it commit done end of story simple they're at the same level of abstraction but as this method here this method is at a different level of abstraction from the other method which was simply doing the 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 what and not the how except this was like the how oh well in order to create a command you give me a connection you do this and I set the parameters blah, 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 too much detail <laughs> too much detail for that level so even though this data manager is much lower in the system in terms of levels of abstraction every class has its own idea of at what level it is and again you start from zero so I'm in this class I don't care to know where this class is in the entire system but I'm here and now I need to get some work done I'm at level zero right and I'm going to orchestrate I might use a helper class to get help me with that that functionality in fact this method here actually will be in most of my systems this will be in a different class that's a command factory I mean you know systems have thousands of store procs you can't put all of that in this class here it's too much for this one class the data manager so you abstract that out for that reason as well but if you remember I said first refactor to a method right one of my other pet peeves is people are always trying for reuse right they sort of imagine reuse I'm saying don't if this was the first one first thing I did in the system I'd say I'm going to put it in this class this method here I'm going to put it in this class yes I may have more of these kinds of things happening in this class I'll do it again for the second one I have a rule of thirds <laughs> I'm essentially saying wait before you start to refactor for reuse and imagine reuse when it occurs for the third time this copy pasting then you have a much better understanding of what it is that you need in your system what the variances are across these three different methods and then maybe your choice is not like a method maybe it's polymorphism maybe it's composition you don't know if you leave your decision making to later you have the option to go in different direction in different ways if you immediately say oh that should be a function you're locked in <laughs> you're married to your solution and not going to change so I'm saying apply the, the rule of thirds when you do a copy paste for the third time at that point sit back think design with the team whatever it is and come to a conclusion the decisions you make then will be more informed because you have experienced this for the third time now you kind of have a sense of where the system is going where the requirements are going and based on that your decision for whether it should be a method or a class is it using polymorphism is it using composition that's all going to be informed by the experiences you've had that three third time over so wait don't jump to a class I see this happening a lot you know people say oh that should be another class but hang on <laughs> especially when you've been none of us experience like that business or whatever it is the vertical you don't have no idea where you're going to go eventually right even with the years of experience I have I let the decision making uh, I wait on the decision I have an idea like I'm saying here I know this is going to eventually go into a class called some command factory but I'm going to wait because if I just did the same thing I've been doing for the last 20 years then how am I going to grow 
maybe in this one system, something is different and that gives me an idea to go a different route. I want that opportunity. I want the option to say, you know what? Yes, I've been doing this for 20 years, but I'm going to do this differently in this system. So I'm going to wait. <laughs> anyway, so we've talked about and discussed levels of abstraction. I've been giving you a code example. I'm hoping this code example has further solidified what it is I've been trying to explain here with regards to levels of abstraction. And I'll put the I'll put the original code up on my GitHub, original meaning the unrefactored version. If you want to use that as, a, as an exercise to arrive at the same conclusion yourself to kind of see it all happening step by step, maybe you can watch this video and repeat so you can kind of see it all happening. Then that'll be cool. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope I did a good job trying to explain levels of abstraction. If you, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. You can help me help you, and you can certainly help me by inviting your friends, colleagues, subscribing, writing comments. So write comments, ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer. Until next time, I will see you. What is that? No. I will see you. No. I will see you next time.